G'day team, welcome to another episode of Get Coached. Today we're going to have a chat about cross training and running, or more accurately, about how riding a bike can help your running and some of the benefits that, um, that it'll bring. Uh, today we, we had a pretty solid day yesterday with a five hour ride and a run, uh, a couple of hours of running. And today we're doing a, a shorter ride, which is going to be pretty hilly. So about 30, 33 k's, but just short of probably a thousand meters of elevation in it. So today for us, it's about strength, but we want to chat to you guys about how riding will be of great benefit for those of you who are looking to run further and faster. As we climb this hill, you're probably asking me, well, what are the benefits of riding my bike when I'm a runner? Number one, aerobic endurance without the impact. You can do very long, steady state rides, which will give you enormous aerobic benefit. I've run some of my fastest runs of very little running. For example, my fastest Ironman marathon, 317 in uh, Taiwan. Didn't run for six weeks due to injury. Not that long ago. Done my fastest 5K for a while, down in the 18s. Very little running. Off big blocks of riding. Number two, you can hit those high intensities without the risk of injury. Super high intensity, VO2, threshold, neuromuscular endurance. This is all uh, a lot safer on the body than doing them running, particularly neuromuscular work, it's uh, it's almost, almost something that's probably worse for you running, but number three, strength. You do this right up hills, riding with a, a good technique, dropping your heel, lifting with the hammies and glutes, turns things on that as a runner we're generally pretty poor at. VMO, hamstrings, glutes. Helps, which will help prevent injury and will give you a better running technique, get you strong. Four, is go places you haven't been before. You can go a bit further for the same amount of time and do a bit of exploring in your local area, or like we're doing today, except for this bit, in the local national park, hitting some trails. Nothing technical, just a bit of fun. Number five, learning a new skill. It's always good to keep learning learn constantly for a longer and happier life as we slowly ever so slowly make our way up this hill So, what do you need to get started? Well, not much really. Trusty steed of some description, road bike, mountain bike, gravel bike, TT bike, um, what else have you got? Tourer, whatever it is. Probably the most important part if you're gonna start riding. Two, stack hat, helmet, definitely need one of them. And something to hold your hydration in. And that's about it. It's not hard to get going, to get out the front door and, and start riding, which is which is good. It's like running, it's pretty simple. It can be diabolically complicated like everything, but keeping it simple is definitely uh, definitely a good option to start with. And once you've got that bike, you're out the door, you've done, done a couple of rides, what are the best ways to do your riding? Well, you want to do for that endurance ride. It's just long and steady and conversational. Make sure, take a friend, Chat the whole way, stay comfortable, nice and easy. If you want to do some strength work, get into the hills, nice and low cadence or RPM, and make sure that you're both sitting and standing whilst climbing. It activates different muscles, so nice and simple. Lastly, if you want to work that top end, that threshold, that VO2 max, really short, really high intensity intervals. Not probably something you'd start with, 
but has become more experienced riding a bike. Definitely a good option. You can do that on the flat, do it on the hills, but um, intervals ranging from 30 seconds through to about five minutes, depending on the effort that you're putting in and growing the distance of those. So you might start with 30 seconds by 10, and then it might be 15, and then it might be 20, and then up to one minute and so on and so forth. So some simple ways to um, kick it off. Not hard, it's just a matter of getting out of the door. And, and probably one thing I haven't mentioned but is really, really important is being comfortable on a bike. Take a bit of time to get it set up, whatever it is, uh, whether you go to a, a bike fitter or a bike shop or spending some time changing bits and pieces because once you're comfortable, it's a lot easier. Because most people, their, their bum's going to run out of patience before their legs will because it uh, can be rather unpleasant when you first start. So make sure you're uh, super comfortable on that bike. Kill them. All good. All good. I am fucked. We're done. And as I mentioned at the beginning, the purpose of today's ride for us was about strength. So we covered 29.8 kilometres. We climbed 907 metres with an average heart rate of 116 which is very low aerobic for me, and a max of 150, which is just touching on threshold. So that's probably a good definition of a strength ride for, for running, uh, low cadence, lots of seated and standing climbing. A bit of fun, oh, we, didn't, we didn't go real quick, average of 13 kilometers an hour. We're on the trails on the mountain bikes, so obviously not real fast, but we nailed the purpose, which was the most important thing. And uh, right now I'm off for a feed. I'm buggered and hungry. I hope you enjoyed what we brought you today. It's been um, a bit of fun. Make sure you uh, get out there and give it a try because getting on the bike will definitely help you running, both in the short and the long term. As always, thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button. It'd be greatly appreciated. Make sure if you haven't already, subscribe because it really helps us out and we really appreciate it. And lastly, if you have been out there and used riding as cross training, let us know down there in the comments any successes or hopefully if you haven't, but any failures that you've had and what you do differently next time. And as always, go further.